hello and welcome to another Haskell kata. Uh, I will uh, do the string calculator kata by Roy Oshroff again today and I will try and focus on the uh, separating the parsing from the actual calculating. So usually it's input the string and return the numbers, the result as an int and now I want to see if I can have a some kind of split um, so to see if the string can parse into valid input and the input can then be added and see where that leads us because uh, well it might look different and there is a a, a thing that's called uh, parse don't validate and i want to see if i can narrow the type uh, input somehow so that we can parse the user input what's supposed to be the user input into a type that is uh, always usable so we can catch errors in the input um, as easy as uh, soon as possible. Well, let's see how it works. Uh, the kata will be uh, in the link. Uh, the link will be in the description, sorry. So this is um, the site uh, where the kata is described. And first we have to implement uh, this function that's actually the method signature. So let's see, it should be uh, int to string function called add. And the signature will be more like this. So now it's something that's undefined and that will get a warning. And we have to write a test to see. Um, yeah, I want to try to start writing property tests as soon as possible, uh, the same way that I did in a kata uh, yesterday. Let's see. It's kata add now. And if we have an empty string, it should be zero. And let's see, it's undefined, of course. We ignore that one and we can see, wait, let's name the method test something good. Enter string should lead to zero. Okay, that's the first part. We are not parsing, we are just stating that if we get an empty string, result should be zero. Um, ha. Huh. So it's, um, so now we will have, uh, one number, uh, it should return that number always. And I think still here. Wait, let's add that test for any uh, yeah, we make this a hedgehog property just like yesterday. Um, for any integer in the range. Um, And they are bounded. Cut up and add show x it should equal x. Let's see if we have everything. Okay. two examples one failure and that example is the the parsing and um, well if we can see what happens here um, yesterday we did the same we should say from maybe zero um, read 
maybe. And then numbers is the string that's input. So it still works for any int. And actually, this is the parsing that you do. The input to the add function, if we were to split it, would probably be the same that uh, integer. So now it's, I think it's still useless to uh, try and split here. Um, what we will do is refactor uh, generator. I want to be able to uh, see the input directly, just like we did yesterday. So we create a um, property function that we give the name of the function as input and the generator. And that should re run a property with uh, and the generator should return both the string as input and the expected result. Um, let's do it like this. Name and the generator and it should be replaced by this. Name and generator and the generator should give both input and the expected result. Now we re-generate the signature. And if we have this, oops, yeah. Import these, okay. Still need to define the generator that gives us both the string and the result, and then we can say, well, this part again, but it's just the generator. Wait, no errors. We get the generator, and from that we give both the string and the result. And now any single number works. So let's see if we change this, what it looks like in the output. If the test fails, it shows both the input and the expected result from the generator. Uh, for more explanation, uh, you can watch yesterday's kata, I guess, uh, where I implement this as well. Um, still, this is just refactoring. Uh, now we go to Two inputs, um, two numbers separated by comma, and the free write test I need two numbers. X and Y and re return show X comma show Y and X plus Y should be the result. Now we see it fails. It fails in the first possible example 0 comma 1 because 0 comma 0 is probably also uh, one of the test cases and it returns 0 because it's not parsed uh, from here. So let's see what we can do now. Um, if we use um, the splitting on comma again, say um, we take, we break the string as soon as it is a comma, and we get the a number and then the string, that means it was one number. But if we get a number, the comma and another number, it should be those two, but we have to parse them, of course. 
and here is probably the part where we are going to have to change some stuff. Would this work? Well, GHC thinks there might be something else as first position, but anything in the first position would be to come, of course. And we see that it works. So this is the first implementation where I think we uh, are going to split the parsing from the adding. Let's see if we split this into two functions. Will we do this in the test this time or will we still do it here? Um, because we can have two functions then we can test uh, separately from, uh, from each other. Um, let's say that this parse function will give us some input to the add function. Uh, how we will, will we do this? If we want to see the result. So add will look something like um, our new add function. If we have a function complete, it would be string to int. And it would be something like um, calculate after parse. And um, parse would be, in this case, possibly a list, a possibly empty list of integers. So parse would be string to list of int and calculate would then take list of end to end. And if we use this stuff to move it around, then it should still uh, fit. But I want to write a test for this. So we should write the test for Kata calculate. No, let's let's do cal uh, kata parse first. If we give it an empty list, it should give us no ints, I guess. So kata parse should be the empty list. Oh, of course, we have to uh, export them. It's not used yet. So I forgot the time again. I will uh, check the timestamps later. Add will give us. Well, let's add it to the export list. It's not used yet, but doesn't matter. We have um, implemented. Yeah, of course. Aha. So this is how I should do it in the future if I want to write a test first. I mean, if I write undefined, it will not compile and run, won't run the test. But if I use error, uh, there will not be a warning, but a runtime error. Uh, parse is the one we should test, okay. So parse on the empty string should be, well, parse on anything can now be the empty list. Now I have a green test. And it should also work for any single number. So, yeah. Maybe we should rename this one prop add and this one prop parse. Or we should give it the function. I'm refactoring the stuff here for the properties, aren't I? Okay, let's do that. And let's add a timestamp. Time stamp. Um, uh, generalize prop function. So if we rewrite prop so that it tests the input and the output after calling something 
here. So we could extract kata add and that would generalize the types that it has as input and as result. So let's see if we do it like this. We give the function here, kata add. So that is the function on our test, but I guess. Um, yeah, it's before the string. And if we use the foot here, okay. We can add a new signature. And then it means um, both the input, can I rename this? No. So let's say, T comma no, T the word T should be input and the word A should be result. Okay, excuse the refactoring. Now prop works for any inputs and results that have a, a showable input and a showable result, of course, to show what goes wrong if, uh, if it's not expected. And results should be uh, equatable, so there should be a quality constraint. If we have then the function that under test, that is the function that will create the result from the input, we give it a name, a generator that gives us both the input and expected result, then we have a spec, and the spec is a test that is uh, executed. It will be a property test that generates lots of inputs and results that go together and will test it. And if it goes wrong, it will show that. So let's do that again here to show us that it still works after refactoring. Yeah, it shows us the zero comma minus one that doesn't add up to minus one. And well, that's it actually. It's the only test that fails if I Fail breaking because we only have one test that tests separators. Anyway, now it's possible to use this property test for single numbers and see if we can have it uh, change to parse. And then we will create a test that is called parse single number. So we define that parse single number, oops, what happened here? Parse single number will generate something that from a single string, from a string gets a list of ints, just like parse that does. And if we use this one from this every single int, it should give a list of that single integer. Well, we see it fail. Ah, I should have added the times timestamp again. Or a single number. I'm so sorry, guys. This is a bit of a mess, but now you can see how I try to think and speak in English, not my native language, and make this happen. Uh, that parse would be something like this. I'm guessing. No, uh, from maybe it's empty list if it isn't parsable. And otherwise it should be, wait, I think we have to do this differently. Maybe empty list and otherwise it should be um, it should create a list of one. Okay, yeah, so it works for any single number now. Now we can try to do it for any two numbers. Copy this implementation again to see how we can adjust it to 
reduce be reduced to a list of numbers. If we give it the show x comma show y, it should return us a list of x uh, comma y. And it doesn't. It does give us an empty list because it cannot parse. And that's where the break comes into play now. If we copy this, then we can say, okay. Uh, we should probably copy it all. Oh no, wait. We still need this for the first parse. And in this case, well, oh, I forgot to read maybe. So this is maybe empty list or one you read maybe. And here we should do this for both the ends. I'm guessing. But instead of adding, we should concat them. Okay. Well, this is a lot. Let's refactor this. Oh my. 21 minutes. We are not that far. <laughs> we are still not still on two numbers and we haven't added them yet. Extract uh, parse int. I guess we are going to call it parse int because this. This gives us a list of int. What if we could give it a maybe int? Wait, let's parse int here as well and here as well. Oops. This does not look as good as I thought it would. If we give it a maybe int, well, no, let's, let's stay like this. We have to do calculate now. Let's see. Let's describe. Calculate. Ah, that happened. If we give it an empty list of ints, it should return zero. Of course it's error now, so yeah, save our If we, wait, what happened? Now we return zero anyway. start calculating one number and now let's see if we have a single list of ints of uh, yeah a list of one int it should return that int how can this fail? Oh wait, let's do something with it. Well, actually, if we have to sum them, let's still not go there. Can I get add another? No, not automatically. This works. It's still a partial function. I really hate those error functions. But we can see here that if we add two numbers, oops, and this is really a simple function, actually, for the moment, for the time being. 
and it should be the sum function. At least it starts converging into that. So um, now I have split everything. Wait, do. It's not generic, but it, in general, it should converge to the sum function. Well, we've split it. So if we now call replace these functions, these adds with the add prime, they should still work, and they do. So let's still call them add. I forgot to. Write timestamp again. Uh, let's remove the add function and run it like this. Yep, okay, it still works. That is a function splitting. I'm not sure if that's the best way to go about it, but yeah, that's for now. Um, we have five minutes left, somewhat like that, four minutes. Um, allow the add method, method to handle an unknown amount of numbers. So we can split it into calculate many, because that one is Probably very easy. If we generate a list of numbers, let's say. linear range between zero and a thousand just like I'm thinking this up for the first time um, if we have that list it should result in the sum of that list well and actually this is the implementation so we could replace calculate with just sum And it works. All the tests still pass. The more interesting is probably to parse many. So let's say if we try to do this, parse any amount of numbers, what should happen? If we generate a list of axes, we should expect to get to see the, that list of axes as input. And if we show this by interleaving them with commas, intercalating them, yeah. Now it won't work, of course, because it's only working for two numbers. But if we say this is not just y, but it can be the rest, parse the rest. And I would say that we can refactor something about this uh, parsing. Um, what if we give this a maybe? Because uh, invalid strings can result in empty lists. Ah, we're not going to test this. But what you usually should do is if you want to parse something that will not always uh, parse to a usable result, you can use uh, some error condition. So you get either the result that you expected if it is a parsable string or some error condition and 
the easiest one to do is the maybe, um, which then leads to uh, having to change this one later. Um, if it's not parsable, you should uh, make it known as soon as possible. So um, the list would be simple. If the parse would be simplified to read maybe, parse int then would be if it's single int and it's parsable, then you should do um, well, if it's something you should uh, make it into a list if it's not so you map this if you get an int then you uh, make it into a list if it does if it not well if it isn't you should just return nothing and in this case as well um, this is mappable in a different way uh, if it, these are, were simple ints you could do it like this but we have to lift this so I would say lift a2 and then const function yeah so if any of these is nothing it would return a result in nothing and if both are something this single int is prepended to the list of what happens uh, if the rest is parsed. Final thing, oh, I'm going, this is almost half an hour. No, it's more than half an hour. I'm sorry uh, to take your time so far so long. Um, this should also return the error condition then, which means that this should be mapped as well for a nothing it should return nothing but we do not test fail conditions so everything here should return uh, maybe ins and they should be just um, well maybe int just x and y this should return uh, the parser should be returned maybe at list just same for this parser maybe just and this parser as well it should return maybe int list and it should always be this we don't test for fail conditions so there's no, no place that we test uh, that we get nothing. Oh wait, I don't need brackets there. So all the add functions return just and all the parse functions return just, so there is no error condition. And the calculate uh, didn't have to be uh, changed because it always gets valid input because we make that sure that the parse returns a list of ints and nothing else. And it can always handle a list of ints because any list of ints can be summed. If it's empty, it's zero. And if there's ints, it works. So um, the calculate part, if you would were to go on from here, would um, get types uh, that always represent valid input. And it's easy to do, so this always will be a total function. And the parse, and therefore the add, which is a composition, sh could handle, uh, could have invalid situations. You don't have to test for them in this kata. It said it in the beginning. But that's how you would um, implement um, splitting of parsing and the logic handling. Well, I hope uh, this was interesting to you. Um, let's say that the outro starts here, 34 minutes. Uh, again, I'm sorry that it uh, took longer than half an hour, but I think it was an interesting experiment. Um, if you liked it, yeah, let me know by leaving a like. And um, if you have any suggestions for other kata or other uh, approaches, leave it below in the comments. Thank you for watching again and I see you next time.